In this video, we determine the square root of an expression consisting of the sum of two integers. Then we determine the cube root of an expression consisting of the sum of three integers. In each case, we will add the values before we find the root of the expression. Sometimes, the instruction given for examples like this is simplify. Simplify is actually a fairly vague instruction, but it generally means that we do things such as adding together like terms and working towards an expression that looks as compact and simple as possible. As always, remember to pause the video when you need more time to read the screen. Our first example is the square root of a numerical expression which consists of the sum of 36 and 64. In other words, 36 plus 64, all under the square root sign. Note that we cannot apply the square root operation individually to separate terms under the root sign. So don't be tempted to take the square roots of 36 and 64 separately, even though each of them is a perfect square. The first step involves adding the values together. 36 plus 64 equals 100. Now we have a single term under the root sign. Recall that the square root of a value, when multiplied by itself, gives the original value. In order to determine the square root, it can be useful to apply the principle, when in doubt, write it out. As an optional step, we may then rearrange the factors, which are multiplied together to form the expression. Writing out means that we express 100 as the product of its prime factors, which you can determine by prime factorization, using what we sometimes call the ladder method. The value 100 can be written as 2 times 2 times 5 times 5. Now we split the factors into two equal groups and write 100 as 2 times 5 multiplied by 2 times 5. If we cannot create two identical groups of factors, then the original value is not a perfect square and the square root is irrational. These two steps may not be necessary for you, but you can do the work in your head. After rearranging the factors on paper or in our heads, we can identify the square root. It consists of all the factors in one group. Note that we make the expression as simple and compact as possible, removing unnecessary operators like multiplication signs. Our calculation is now complete. Our second example is the cube root of a numerical expression which consists of the sum of 27, 64 and 125. In other words, 27 plus 64 plus 125 all under the root sign. Note that we cannot apply the cube root operation individually to separate terms under the root sign. So don't be tempted to take the cube roots of 27, 64 and 125 separately, even though each of them is a perfect cube. The first step involves adding the values together. 27 plus 64 plus 125 equals 216. Now we have a single term under the root sign. Recall that the cube root of a value, when multiplied by itself once and then again a second time, gives the original value. In order to determine the cube root, it can be useful to apply the principle, when in doubt, write it out. As with the first example, writing out means we express 216 as the product of its prime factors, which you can determine by prime factorization. The value 216 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now we split the factors into three equal groups and write 216 as 2 times 3 multiplied by 2 times 3 multiplied by 2 times 3. If we cannot create three identical groups of factors, then the original value is not a perfect cube and the cube root is irrational. After rearranging the factors on paper or in our heads, we can identify the cube root. It consists of all the factors in one group. Our calculation is now complete. It is worth noting that we can actually present each of our answers fully in only three or four lines, provided we don't make any silly mistakes. 
Here we are not really taking shortcuts. We are simply not showing how we rearrange the factors before determining the root. Compare the two calculations and note the similarities and differences. To find a cube root, we determine three groups of factors which we can relate to the idea of a cube being a three-dimensional solid. To find a square root, we determine two groups of factors, which we can relate to the idea of a square being a flat, two-dimensional plane figure.